friends, in this video, I'm going over 10 extremely practical tips you probably aren't using in Google Docs, but definitely should. Starting with tip number one, use building blocks to save time. If you're currently digging around the menu bar to access features like insert, bookmark, you should know there's a much better way. Simply place your cursor at the end or at the beginning of a line of text, press the at symbol and followed by bookmark and then press enter and this inserts a bookmark directly. Drop a like if you didn't know about the ad command, and if you did, click the dislike button twice. The rule of thumb is that many of the features found under the insert, format, and tools tabs are available through the at command. But this can be overwhelming if you've never used this before. So here are my top use cases in addition to inserting bookmarks. First, for longer documents, I like to add a table of contents at table of contents, enter, and then I select the with dotted tab uh, header option. And pro tip, I can also at to add a table, select just one cell. So it looks like this, type in table of contents and make this font size slightly bigger, make this middle aligned, change the background color to something more professional looking, and this looks pretty nice. Second, if we don't wanna create a table from scratch, we can type at product roadmap, press enter, to generate a pre-formatted table and make edits directly. For example, select all the text and make the font size smaller, uh, replace project with work stream, for example, and if you don't like these, this drop down, these drop down options, rather, we can press type a drop down to add our own selections. And finally, my favorite one by far is to type at line to add a horizontal line to indicate the end of a note section. There might be a slight learning curve, but if you're a regular Google Docs user like I am, using the at command instead of the menu bar saves so much time over the long run. And let me know your top use case in the comments. Productivity tip number two for Google Docs. Enable pageless mode for maximum flexibility. So check this out. If I go to format and switch to pageless format, let me zoom out to show you how this looks like. We just removed all the pages in your Google Doc document. And doing this unlocks some really useful features. First, let's create another table at product roadmap. And as you can see, since we're no longer constrained by the page width, we can drag the cells out as far as we want if we want more space. If we wanna take this a step further, we can go to view text width, select wide or full, and this lets us really take advantage of all that extra space. I find this most helpful when I'm in more of a brainstorming mode. My favorite feature by far though is heading toggles. If you look to the left here, you can see that I can actually collapse this heading, collapse this heading, and collapse this heading. And this is only possible in pageless mode and if you create a heading first. For example, uh, I'm typing normal text right now, so there is no option for me to toggle this, right? But if I type pound, 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 I should probably cater to Gen Z, hashtag, hashtag, space, this is heading two, this is normal text, I can now collapse this if I wanted to. This even works for something like hashtag, hashtag times five, space, this is heading five, this is normal text. And I can collapse this as well. Another quality of life feature within pages mode is if you or someone else leaves a comment on your document, you can actually minimize it by clicking the right arrow here. And you can still expand the comment by hovering over that comment bubble. Google Docs tip number three, set and save font defaults for new documents. If you've been following along, you might have noticed I have different font settings for heading two, heading three, heading four, and normal text. I did this on purpose to make my document more readable. And when I have the outline open on the left, easier to navigate. For example, I can click into the key materials, heading two, and then click back down to notes. If you wanna save some time and just copy my defaults, do this. First, open up a new tab, type doc.new, enter, to create a new empty Google 
uh, doc document. Hashtag, hashtag, space. This is heading to, that looks okay. Hashtag, 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 space. This is heading three. And whoa, this does not, this doesn't look as good as Jeff's version. Heading four, heading five, so on and so forth. Next, you can grab this Google Docs template I created completely for free uh, by signing up for my workspace toolkit. I'll leave a link down below. If you scroll all the way down here, you can cop select all this first, command or control C to copy. Go back to your document, command and control V to paste. Now highlight my heading two, go to the drop down menu here, heading two, update heading two to match. Go down to my heading three, heading three, heading three, update heading three to match. Heading four, rinse and repeat, update heading four to match. Heading five, go all the way down, update heading five to match. And finally, normal text here, normal text, update normal text to match. And once all that is done, last step, Without highlighting anything, go back to the drop down menu, options, options, save as my default styles. Now, when you create a new Google Doc, the default font settings for headings two to five and normal text should be updated. For example, oh, this is heading two, it worked. Wow, Jeff is definitely the best. And I highly recommend you spend a few minutes today to update your default fonts, since this little bit of upfront effort will probably save you a bunch of time over the long run. Pro tip, after you update and save your default styles, you can open up an existing document that's still using your previous font like this. Command or control A to select all the text. Go to the drop down menu here, go to options and use my default styles to update all your fonts. Productivity tip number four, link to headings and documents. If you watch my other videos, you know one of my very unpopular opinions is that when colleagues don't complete their assigned tasks, 90% of the time, it's our fault for not making it easy enough for them to take action. For the remaining 10% of the time, they're just idiots. Just kidding. So if you need your teammates input for a specific section in your Google Doc, move your cursor to that heading, right click, copy heading link, and insert that hyperlink as part of your request in this email, for example. Similarly, if you wanna to point to a specific comment in Google Docs, you can click the three dots here and get link to this comment. Speaking of spoon feeding our colleagues, tip number five for Google Docs is to preview suggested edits. Most of us are probably familiar with the suggest feature, which we can enable by going to the top right and clicking suggesting. And this allows us or other people to make suggestions on our document, which we can then accept or reject. This is obviously super useful for collaboration, but if there are a lot of comments, it's very hard for the owner to visualize how the end result would look like. So we can actually go to tools, review suggested edits, select preview, accept all to see how the final version would look like. And if everything looks good, we can just click the accept all button here. Pro tip, we can use a keyboard shortcut control option T on a Mac or alt T on Windows to quickly access the tools menu. Productivity tip number six, restore version history. Let's say you use the preview suggested edits feature we just talked about and you clicked accept all edits by mistake. Don't worry though, not the end of the world because we can just go to file, version history, see version history. And within this view, we can actually restore a previous version. Pro tip, for important documents, I would usually name the latest version, for example, this one. I would usually name this to something like before manager, before sending this off to my manager for review, just in case, you know, they screw up. Just kidding, my manager would never screw up. He's, he's the best, the smartest, the most intelligent, the funniest, the most charming, um, the best manager ever. Tip number seven, compose and send emails from Google Docs directly. Now that we've written a flawless comms doc for this new product, we want to write a short and humble email announcing this product launch to the rest of the company. We can create a new Google document doc.new and within this blank document, type at, uh, type in email draft, select the email draft building block. And for subject line, let's use the same clickbaity title every single AI publication uses, a game changing AI product just launched and type in an email. And now we can actually just 
tag our colleagues from the marketing and PR teams to come in here for review. Obviously, if you're the only person responsible for composing this email, don't do this. This is a waste of time. Just draft it in your own Gmail inbox, right? But if there are two or more people involved, it's best to have everything confirmed in Google Docs, make sure all the right people are included in the two and CC fields. And when everything is finalized, you can just click the e email icon here. Wow. And this brings up a new compose window in uh, Gmail. By the way, if your Google Drive is a mess, especially given all the new documents we created in this video, you might wanna check out my Workspace Academy course, where I share a systematic workflow that helps you eliminate digital and mental clutter. For example, I teach you how to set up an automation in Google Drive that automatically organizes all new files and documents into a Drive inbox folder. I also teach you step-by-step -step how to develop and maintain a simple yet reliable file management system so that you can find files within seconds instead of minutes. You can find out more using the link down below. Productivity tip number eight for Google Docs, email in PDF format. Once the document is finalized, we all know that we can go to file, download and download this as a PDF document, right? But we can actually save the hassle of downloading this and attaching the PDF to an email by staying within file, go to email, email this file, uh, we can input recipients, add a message, and a PDF version of this document will be sent to the recipients. Another nice feature is under file, email, email collaborators, and this allows me to email everyone who has access to this document in one go. Uh, for example, if I want to remind them to leave feedback in this document. This way, I don't have to tag them all individually or input their emails one by one in Gmail. Tip number nine is related to something very few of us like to think about in Google Docs, and that is tables. First, if we have two rows like this and we want to only add another cell to the right in the second row, we can right click within this cell here, split cell, increase the number of columns from one to two and click split. And now we have one plus one, two, two cells. We can then make small adjustments like this, paste in an image like so. And uh, this is one of my favorite formatting uh, tricks in Google Docs. Under table options, under color, table border, we can select this to be zero. And now the border disappears, but the table structure remains the same, allowing us to copy this into another location like Gmail, where it's still neat and tidy. And all your colleagues would be like, oh my God, that's so amazing. That's so cool. How'd you do that? That's exactly how my colleagues treat me at work, by the way. I'm not lying. It's the truth. I'm actually cool. I've grouped the last few tips together since they're all quality of life features. For example, if you only want to receive notifications meant for you in a Google Doc, you can go into the uh, email notification, click into the notification settings here and select for you instead of all. Next up, by default, the last part of your Google Doc URL will always end with the word edit. But what you can do is to replace edit with the word copy before you share this with someone else next time. And now the recipient, when they click into this link, will be prompted to make a copy of the document instead of opening it up. Similarly, if you replace edit with a preview, um, your teammates will open up a clean version of the document with no comments, no suggestions, and no option to make edits. And lastly, if you replace edit with export question mark, format equals PDF, uh, recipients will be prompted to download this document as a PDF directly. Oh, and before trying this out, make sure you have shared the appropriate level of access. Let me know down below if I missed a tip or feature that you use all the time. Feel free to share this video with all your other super cool colleagues. And you might wanna check out my top productivity tips for work next. See you in the next video. In the meantime, have a great one. <laughs>